have heard from thousands of foster parents through creating content and educational videos and being a foster parent myself for almost five years. And I want to share with you everything that I know and I've heard about getting licensed. There will be pain points. There will be waiting times. There's going to be mistakes. Balls are going to get dropped. So today I'm going to walk you through the whole licensing process and tell you some tips and tricks along the way to get licensed quickly and efficiently. I'm going to talk through the beginning, getting qualified and all the different steps along the way, but go ahead and jump to the section that you're most concerned about or having problems with. It's listed below. Step one, you need to make sure that you qualify. Every single state and county is going to have different qualifications. I have a link below where you can search your state, but generally speaking, you need to be 18 to 21 years old. You need to have room in your home and a safe home. You need to be able to support yourself financially, meaning you usually cannot be any, in any governmental assistance programs. You need to pass a background check and you need to be fit to parent, meaning you're physically and mentally fit and well enough to parent. And I'm gonna say it now, you need to be able to have time in your schedule to take care of all the responsibilities of being a foster parent. If already thinking about fitting the trainings into your schedule is stressing you out, it's probably not the right time. For example, it was around 40 hours of training that I had to take to get licensed to foster. Next, you can search for your local department of children and family services and see when they're having an introductory session. These are usually, you know, a few times a month, they're virtual or in person, and this is where you go and get all the answers to your questions about what it is to be a foster parent, the current needs in your county, and what the steps are and requirements. This is a great time for you to bring your questions, your worries, your concerns. Write those down ahead of time so that you don't forget to ask them while you're there. And here's another tip. When you're there, make sure you get the name and contact information of the person leading this session. This is often the person who is in charge of the training or at least on the team. This is where we need to get to know all of the team members because we're gonna need that later if there's any concerns. In some areas, there will be private agencies that can license you to foster. You may not know this exists. I did not know it existed when I started. I called my local department and they told me it was a year waiting before I could even start attending classes. There was such a backlog with that. Instead, I went into a private agency to get licensed and they were able to move much faster. So you can ask about this when you are collecting all that initial information. In some larger cities, there will be multiple agencies that you could get a license with. This is where you need to really think about your values and what you're gonna need as a foster parent. And you can use that to choose Choose an agency. I have a full list of all of these questions that you might want to ask and I'll link it below so that you don't forget anything. After you've collected all this initial information, it's time to go back to your family in your home and your close family and friends to talk about being foster parents. Now I remember some people in my training classes when I was going through it that decided not to tell family and friends. And they really struggled along the way because they didn't have people that could give them references. They didn't have anyone that could provide babysitting or overnight care. And it became this like awkward conversation later down the road. So because of that, I really recommend speaking with your family and friends ahead of time. Yes, they may have concerns. Yes, they may have questions or worries, but this is a good time to get everyone on board because you cannot foster on an island. You're gonna need support. In some situations, if you are seriously considering fostering, a worker will actually come to your home and do an individual interview and a quick home inspection. You do not need to have everything set up properly for this meeting, but this is a good chance to walk through the home and ask those questions about the fence around your pool or the staircase that can't be gated or the pass-through bedroom den space. All of those things are important to ask about because you may need to fix those things before you get licensed. And some of these home projects can be very expensive. For example, our pool fence was around $1,500 to install. I only mention that because if budget and finances are a consideration, it's important to know that early on so you can start planning and preparing for those expenses. The county usually does not pay for any of the setup costs in your home. 
All right, and right at the beginning, you're gonna start your first set of paperwork, which is usually what they call an application. So it's gonna be a lot of general information about you, a couple pages, but here is where we're going to learn how to scan everything. From that very first document that you sign, take a picture and start to organize things digitally. I tell you this because there is a chance that this paperwork might get lost. And to be honest, this is gonna set you up in the future as a foster parent because lost paperwork is a pain point that will not stop. Now, every agency and department is going to direct you differently on how to co complete things and when to do it. But if you've lived out of state in the last 10 years, I would highly recommend getting your live scan, which is a background check. Get that done quickly and as soon as possible because the out of state background checks can take months. I've heard from some foster parents that it's taken more than a year to clear all of the out-of-state background checks. So I tell you this so you can get started early. There's also a lot of mistakes that can be made in this out-of-state paperwork. Sometimes it has to be typed, sometimes it has to be handwritten. And so start it now. So usually after the initial paperwork and the live scan, there is a little bit of a waiting period before the training begins because they do sets of training. So a couple times a year or maybe twice a year, they'll do all the training for all the foster parents getting licensed. So if there's a little bit of waiting time at this time, I would start to get to know the other parents at the agency, attend the events, see if they'll let you attend a support group just as a comforting listening ear. And you can start to kind of plug in to the community. This can be incredibly helpful to start building these relationships early. You can also watch documentaries, listen to podcasts, read books, so you can start to learn and get some background knowledge. I highly, highly, highly recommend reading books from former foster youth. I have a whole list I'll link below, but I wish that this was a part of my training because there is so much to learn from people with lived experiences and many former foster youth have written books. So please take the time and listen to them. All right, so the training is going to look different depending on where you are. In smaller areas, there may not be a lot of options for scheduling. In larger cities with bigger foster care populations, there might be multiple options for training. So this could be in-person, evenings and weekends, it could be online, it could be a hybrid of all of that. It will be different depending on where you are. But if you're already having trouble getting this scheduled, I would take a quick pause and reflect. Do you actually have time in your schedule to be a foster parent? Because if you are struggling to schedule this, I would question if you have time. And also, is this agency the right fit? If they keep canceling trainings or they are not able to meet your needs and your schedule, you might wanna take a, a pause and see if this agency is the right one for you. And here's something I wish someone had told me and that's get all the extra training you can during this time, especially if you do not have any kids in your home. Now is the time to get everything you can. When I first got licensed, I took some of the extra training to become a therapeutic foster home. And that means that I have extra training to support kids with elevated behavioral and emotional needs. What I didn't do is I didn't take the medical foster care training classes and I regret it. Now you may be thinking, well, I don't want to provide medical foster care, but the reality is, is a child may move in and develop a medical need while in your home or may have a diagnosis that they didn't know about when the child entered care. And so having all of that background knowledge can save you a lot of time and energy and you don't have to go and stop everything to get those classes in order to keep the child in your home. Ultimately, if you do not have the proper training and do not have time to get the proper training, they may move that child from your home. Now, in addition to the parenting courses and foster her courses, you're also going to get you know, CPR, first aid, those types of trainings too, which are very important. And especially if you're planning to foster babies, make sure you're getting sufficient training for infants. Now, meanwhile, while you are taking the training, you will likely get a checklist of, you know, a hundred different papers that you need to fill out. It's not a hundred, but it feels like it at the time. So you need to go to your doctor and have them sign a form. You need to get a TB test. You might need to go get your car inspected or pull your DMV records. There are so many little checkpoints along the way. It can feel very overwhelming, but take it piece by piece. Make that list for yourself, check things off and scan those documents because these are the things that get lost easily. When you're going through your licensing, it's gonna be several months and 
there is turnover at these agencies and departments. And so this is where and how a lot of paperwork gets lost. If you have everything scanned and organized, and I save it to like a Google Drive, you can just share the link with the new person that comes in. Also, if you are currently in therapy or have recently been in therapy, there's a chance that the worker is going to be reaching out to your therapist. I mentioned this so you are ready and prepared so you can talk to your therapist about how those conversations will go. Additionally, you likely will need references. And so this is typically a non-family member that will fill out a form and share why they think you should be a foster parent. It's important that you let that person know to check their mail or email, or however it's gonna come so they can be aware of it. You wouldn't want this to hold you back. And you know, sometimes these letters are not marked properly and maybe don't get open quickly. So let your friends know that those letters are gonna come. All right, so towards the end of the process, you're gonna have a home inspection. Sometimes that is a worker that comes over with a checklist and I'm gonna show you mine. So I went ahead and printed what mine looks like. This is it guys. I show you this for full transparency, but it is, several pages of items that you need to do to your home and they literally go through one by one. Now, you can get the list ahead of time so you're prepared, it's no big deal. Get that list, ask all your questions, but just know if you do not pass the first time, it is pretty common. A lot of people do not pass on the first inspection. Sometimes someone from the fire department will come through your home as well and so being up to date on all, all the fire codes is really important. Ask the questions just so it can save you time because scheduling those inspections out can take weeks. So they typically arrive at your home and it can take, you know, anywhere from an hour to a couple hours. For us, we actually noticed a problem during the inspection and Chris was able to run to the grocery store. We needed a second first aid kit in a different location. He grabbed one and came back so that we had everything we needed for our inspection. And then at the very end, there is a long interview called a home study. This will happen differently depending on where you are. Sometimes it is one time you sit down with a worker and it's an interview. Sometimes it happens over multiple meetings. And just know that every time you interact with a worker throughout the whole process, they are taking notes. They are reflecting on what questions you're asking. Are you engaged? Do they feel confident that you can do this? And all of that feeds into your licensing, your approval, and that home study. Now, the home study worker likely will come over and speak to the whole family together, and then usually we'll separate and have individual conversations. There are tons of resources online that will tell you almost all of the questions that will be asked. Now, you don't need to prepare an answer. It needs to be candid and the worker is looking for this. They're gonna make sure that it's an authentic response, not a prepared response. But sometimes it can help to look up those questions ahead of time so that you can chat with your partner and have these really important conversations. For example, how are we gonna handle things when we get angry, discipline in the home? What about if we ourselves are triggered by something from our own past, how are we going to handle that? So by looking at those questions ahead of time, it can be really helpful for that home study interview. Okay, so when you have reached this point and you are done with the home study interview, it, there's a little bit of time. They gotta type it all up and then there's usually a waiting period and uh, some time in between home study interview and your actual license. Here are some things you can do during this time. So you can get out of town because when kids move in, that's gonna be hard to do. You're gonna spend time with your partner, see your family, relax, get some sleep. Spend some time on your, your work and personal commitments. Get all of that buttoned up in your own personal life. Another thing that might be surprising is you might start getting phone calls for kids, especially if you are in a really busy city and you are open to taking in older kids. You might hear from some workers about potential kids that could move in. In these cases, they might speed up this waiting period so that a child is not waiting and can move in with you. In every state across this country, there are kids right now living and sleeping in conference rooms, hotel rooms, sometimes even prisons 
waiting for a home. And so if the workers feel that you are ready to go, your home is all set and you would be a good fit, they may start the placement process early. The reason I tell you is so that you can be prepared and you can start thinking about what are the parameters of the kids that you will accept into your home. Think about the basics like age, gender, and general things about the case that you would be comfortable with because if those calls start coming in, you do wanna be ready. I know that was a ton, but no matter where you are in the process, here are four things that you need to keep in mind during the entire time. Number one, make sure everything you fill out, you get a scan copy for, save it on your computer. Number two, get to know who the trainers are, their supervisors, their assistants. You need to know who everyone is, especially as people come in and out of the positions. And if there's any problems, you know who to contact. Number three, just know that you are being watched. And this is also just being a foster parent. You need to be present and active and asking good questions and being involved in all the trainings because you are being assessed. And number four, things will happen. So we do need to be patient. Everyone is overworked. And this includes people who are licensing. Like I said at the beginning, there is such a backlog in my county that I had to go a different direction. So just know that everyone is doing their best. Things happen, we are all human. So some patience and grace will go a long way and will help you set up to be a foster parent because patience and grace is important in fostering as well. So are you getting licensed right now? I would love to hear from you. How is it going? If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to help you. Oh,